here, everybody. My name is Alexandru Kastin. I drive the generative agenda at Adobe, and uh, I'm here to talk about how we use some of the AWS capabilities, how do we think about our data to teach some of the learnings we had in our journey. And at Adobe, we've been serving our customers for four decades, and we've helped them navigate many technological disruptions, digital photography, internet, social era. But last year, we realized that a new era was happening, the era, the AI era. And for us, it was a very important moment. And we've decided to invest early and start doubling down on re-transforming the Adobe product lines into AI-enabled products. And we talked to many customers across all our segments. We talked to consumers. We talked to small businesses and uh, students and education, we talk to our creative professional users, and we talk to enterprises, and we ask them, what do you think Adobe should do in terms of bringing generative AI to all of you the right way? And they told us they need particular things because they're very specific about creating and editing content. They told us they want control. They want to be able to make sure they can materialize what's in their eyes, mind, mind's eye and be able to create and tell the story they want to tell. They told us integration in our product line is very important. And for that, we want to bring those capabilities inside the products they love and use, like Photoshop. They also told us that they want to customize it, be able to create content on brand, and create content variations at scales. But most importantly, they told us they need us to create content that is safe for commercial use. Meaning, they gave us this strong signal that we need to think really deeply about the data we use to train our models. And this is what helped us create a series of uh, models this year and across image generation, vector generation for illustrations, and design generation. And I'm going to show you a quick video with some of the capabilities we've launched throughout 2023. Thank you. We're very proud of what we've accomplished, but we're here to talk about data. Before we doing that, though, very important for us was the success those capabilities had with our customers. Seeing that we train on the right data, we gave them the capabilities they needed, led to amazing success and use of those capabilities. Like, for example, generative fill, which is how the Firefly model is integrated in Photoshop, is the most used feature in Photoshop today. It's used at a rate of 10x more than any other feature we've introduced ever in the Photoshop history. And throughout the year, more than 4 billion images have been generated with Firefly. And again, a very important point for our customers was the, how we train these models, the data we trained on, and let me walk you through how we do it. And reiterating also what Mylan said, when we talked about data, we had the Adobe Stock Marketplace. We have a marketplace of content, hundreds of millions of images, illustrations, videos that Adobe is offering to our customers, and where we have stock contributors that participate in this marketplace. And we've decided to take this as the foundational data set we want to train our assets on. And of course, the stock images are stored in AWS. But we've also decided to enrich this data with a lot of embeddings and augmentations to make this data better for training these models and increase their quality. And it is a lot of, there are a lot of models involved in this process, models that make the data better for training and also models that participate in the generation. When we think about the whole process on how we train our models, so we have the Adobe stock, hundreds of millions of assets. Those assets are already curated and moderated, both using human moderators and AI, to not contain trademarks, intellectual properties, or recognizable characters. Because we want to make sure our model cannot generate those, so our data is filtered 
And th this ensures us, give us the confidence that our model cannot generate a particular brand or logo or recognizable character. We take all this data, and then using various LLMs and other classifiers, we augment it. We create these pre-computed embeddings that help us not only add quality to the data, but in the same time, increase the um, speed at which we train, because having these pre-computed embeddings allows us to train faster, not having to recompute it every time. We do large distributed trainings, and we load the data. It's a very important part of the equation to load data fast, keep the GPUs occupied. So we keep data in S3, we keep data in the last RFX and in FSX, and we continuously monitor it for, uh, continuously synchronize it with the database in Adobe Stack, and check for lineage, and make sure that we have traceability of how models are trained, which data was trained. To make models better, we also have this process called RLHF you might have heard of, reinforcement learning with human feedback. So we collect likes, dislikes, downloads from our apps and feed those back into the training data to teach the model to generate more assets our customers would love. So at the macro level, when we decided to go about it, and again, this was 2022 for us, we created a team responsible for creating data sets as a product. This data team has, a uni has the sole role of taking data, preparing it for training, compacting it in diverse way, computing these embeddings, and sharing it with hundreds of Adobe researchers and apply researchers so they can focus on training the models, making sure that the data they train on is very high quality. We, we operated with petabytes of data, petabytes of raw data, petabytes of embedding. When we fine tune for a new modality like illustrations, we add more petabytes and vectors and videos are gonna increase the quantity of data we have to operate on. And using AWS, scalable solutions enabled us to move very fast and not worry about any of those uh, data sizes. Those were data sizes the Amazon solutions helped us operate at. But we've built software on top. We used open source to stream our data to this training machine. So we package the data, we store it in S3. We're very excited about the S3 Express One Zone, which will allow us to keep the data closer faster to the training nodes and also cheaper. And we compact those data into shards and we stream that to the training machine. So very important with multimodality to invest in a software layer or use some of the offerings AWS is, is uh, bringing to the table to make sure your GPUs uh, stay occupied all time during training. And for us at Adobe, while we decided to train our own FMs, so we're a large company, we, we think our customers need us to invest in our own FMs, uh, we've also tried to stay ahead of the regulations. We always did responsible AI. We've invested in something called content authenticity that enabled us to bring uh, to the table transparency in how not only we train the data, but transparency in how documents are AI generated or not. We're working with uh, different governments and giving them advice on how to improve and regulate training to make sure that uh, everybody in the world and governments can have a say in how models are created to make sure they're trained responsibly. And we also invest in heterogeneous computing because this is a challenge we're seeing these days where not only you need to train on your data, but sometimes you need to add some of your customers' data to create better products. I was very excited to see the announcement of the Amazon Clean Room that might give some of that opportunity to bring data sets together in a clean way without, inter without interference. And if you train with data on the internet, there are emerging threats, things like uh, the laws changing, but also data poisoning. There are new techniques that are happening out there where artists are trying to protect their data by labeling it in a, in a novel way. So you need to really invest in, in how you collect, manage, and govern your data sets to make sure your models, being them ragged or fine-tuned, are high quality. Finally, again, I hope our story helped us, helped you understand uh, how we succeeded at Adobe to create many models, and we have many more in the pipeline by really investing in data. We think uh, it's still an exponential, we live in exponential time, so it might feel late for some of you to come in, but I think the biggest change is still ahead of us in terms of how those generative models will change industries and hopefully will make, will make all the knowledge workers' um, businesses better. 
We do think more data transparency and governance will be needed and regulations will enforce that in various uh, geographies. And I do hope that you will also take this to heart and start investing in your own data sets, start training and fine tuning your models in order to succeed and embrace this generative AI wave. I wanna thank again the AWS team for the partnership. We wouldn't have been able to succeed without them. And um, I think Mylon will join me on stage in a second. Thank you.